Hey guys, this is Justin back with an engineer's perspective and today I'm going to jump on the the train of talking about CPM Magna Cut. It's a brand new steel that Dr. Laren Thomas developed and uh, essentially his goal was to make a stainless 4V. So he's targeting 4V in terms of edge retention and he wanted it to be stainless. And he was hoping that while doing that, he'd still maintain uh, very high levels of toughness. And he did that, he nailed it. So how did he manage that? Well, let's just run through the composition really quick. So you've got a little bit of carbon, chromium, molybdenum, nitrogen, niobium, and vanadium. So you've got these two down here are for carbide formation and grain refinement. Nitrogen helps with hardening, molybdenum helps with stainlessness, chromium stainlessness, and carbon for hardening and carbide formation. Um, and you'll notice right off the bat that this chromium content seems terribly low for a stainless steel, right? Well, the trouble with a lot of stainless steels, and I've included s 45 in over here, very stainless at 16%, chromium. But the trouble is, is that for a lot of stainless steels, because the carbon, chromium, and other element balance is not quite on, what ends up happening is this carbon interacts with this chromium forming chromium carbides or some variation thereof. So what that then result of that is that this chromium isn't allowed to go and aid in stainlessness. But what Laren did is using addition of nitrogen, using the addition of niobium, um, and limiting the amount of carbon that's in there, he was able to balance it just right so that none of this carbon gets bound up with that chromium and all of the carbides that are formed are niobium or vanadium carbides and I think even some nitrides, but honestly, I don't remember. Um, and the net result of that is because you've got all of this chromium freed up is this steel is equally, if not more stainless than M390, which is a very stainless steel. So that's very impressive. And uh, what you get now is a steel that has the same edge retention as 4V, the same stainlessness as 20CV, while also having, do you see that down there? The same toughness as 4V. And that's the major drawback to stainless steels is that when in order to make steel stainless, traditionally we've been adding all of this chromium like an S45VN. The trouble is, is that when chromium makes carbides, you get a huge reduction in terms of toughness for that amount of carbide. And an example of that is, so you see toughness here at 63 Rockwell. So Magna Cut and 4V are the same at 15 foot pounds but you go down to S45 Yin and it's less than a third of that at five foot pounds. And that's because uh, you've got all those chromium carbides. Granted, there's a much higher volume of S45 Yin, but you less than double your carbide volume. So we'll just pretend like it's double the carbide volume, but you get one third the toughness. So what um, Laren has done is you get a stainless steel that doesn't compromise anything by being stainless. And that's really beautiful. Another thing to add is you see down here, CPM4V, 100% of the carbides that are formed are vanadium carbides. And with MagnaCut, it's the same way. You know, there's niobium carbides and whatnot in there, but just keep it simple. It's, it's making those very efficient vanadium carbides. And we like those because you get by far the most edge retention with the least amount of uh, toughness reduction. So if you compare that to S45VN, only 2.5% of this 15% are vanadium carbides. So like 12.5% of this are some form of chromium carbide meaning it's just not very efficient. And S45VN does a fairly decent job of how it's managing these carbides too, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to bash S45VN, but I'm just trying to draw a comparison because S45VN is kind of the up and comer right now. Um, and so I'm just trying to draw that comparison. So, and what that results in is even though MagnaCut has, you know, about half the carbide volume that S45VN does, it 
This edge retention is nearing S45 VN. There's definitely a difference, especially in the way that it's gonna break down, I'm guessing. But your edge retention, this 8% goes farther than, than this 15% like per unit. So it's very efficient in a, its carbides, magna cut is. So that's really the beauty of it is you get the most out of your carbides, you get stainlessness with no drawbacks, uh, and on top of all of that, you get to decently decent hardness uh, from manufacturers. So there's not a lot of Magna Cut out there, but uh, Chris Reeve knives and Creeley blades both have uh, some that came out and they were hitting 62 Rockwell. That is a great production number for a stainless steel. And you're getting 15 foot pounds of toughness. Well, actually I've got it over here for 62. It's like 16 ish. Like, heck yeah, that's freaking awesome. Um, and that's the, uh, the last advantage it's got. It's just, it's the whole package. It's everything. You get the hardness that's gonna make it have so much better edge stability. And, you've, and it's going to be easier to sharpen. You've got the efficient carbides. It's so stainless. It's the whole package, guys. It has no compromises, but one technically. And that's this note down here. Is The thing is, is it's got all those things, but it's never going to compete with something like K390. It just doesn't have the carbide volume that something like K390 does. So... That's its drawback, is it's not a ridiculous um, edge retention thing, but that's not really a drawback. You know, it's all about what you're looking for. Really, what MagnaCut is, is a perfectly balanced steel. It, you can use it for pretty much anything. You pump up the hardness to increase and the, decrease that angle to get the edge retention, or you decrease that hardness or increase the geometry to get the toughness. You can really make you know, a chopper out of Magna Cut, and you could make a high performance, you know, kitchen knife out of it. It's just so versatile, all while being stainless, like just beautiful. But realistically speaking, my opinion of Magna Cut is that if, if you are targeting edge retention less than 4V, you should just make it out of Magna Cut, pretty much straight, you know? So it's, that's, that's where it's at in my opinion. Um, uh, that's maybe not fair. Well, yeah, roughly. I'd say if you're thinking of anything less than 4V in terms of edge retention, you should just go ahead and use Magna Cut. What my pause was that it actually seems to be hitting edge retention numbers maybe a little bit more similar to crew wear just because Magna Cut can't get quite as hard as 4V as easily. So production companies are going to be doing Magna Cut in the 62 range, whereas if they were using 4V, they could probably hit in that 64 range. So that's the caveat there, um, is with that hardness. But generally speaking, that's what I would say. If you want edge retention 4V and up, then, uh, then Magna Cut's not going to be the ticket. If you want edge retention 4V and up, you should just go straight to K390 or 10V, and if you want to go past that, then go to 15V. But it's it's really great. It's, it's the whole package, like I said. It's definitely the way of the future. To me, the next step is designing the, the Magna Cut version of K390. What, what's Magna Cum Laude? I'm trying to think of what's past Magna. Um, Suma. It'd be Suma Cut. Because <laughs> I think Magna means great. And but Suma means highest. So Magna is great cutting, but Suma would be the highest cutting. So that's the steel I'm waiting for, or not waiting for. I think Magna Cut is the way of the future. I think a bunch of blades should be made with it. And I think the next step after Magna Cut is Suma Cut. I have no I, I doubt that uh, Laren's gonna roll with that, but and technically, if you're just following the Latin, that's what it would be. So if there can be a Magna Cut that has 10% vanadium, or I guess equals 10% vanadium, or 20% vanadium carbide after heat treat, we'll have everything we've ever wanted. And life will be amazing. So yeah, that's, that's kind of my thoughts on Magna Cut, and I guess background on it generally. 
Um, I didn't dig in too deep on how Laren balanced it. I'm, I'm gonna touch it right here at the end for you viewers who stayed till the end and decided to stick through my outro is, because I just wanna talk about it a little bit. The way that this chromium is balanced, that none of it turns into carbide, is when you add some of these other elements like niobium and nitrogen is it kind of prevents the carbon maybe i did mention this earlier it prevents the carbon from migrating towards the chromium by stabilizing what's already there but also by attracting the carbon to them instead and uh, it's just a really good blend and s45vn actually does this a little bit it upgrading from S35VN using this same technique of this balance here, um, you're able to add more chromium into S45VN um, while not forming more chromium carbides, but instead forming uh, these niobium vanadium carbides and thus not significantly decreasing its toughness while increasing its edge retention. So this, this is a nicer upgrade than s30 to s35 was to me i like i like what s45's got going on but it still has its achilles heel of being stainless and having a lot of chromium carbides that's its achilles heel and that's what magna cut solves so yeah it's pretty good i'm excited i did order a cpm magna cut t-shirt because i need some more t-shirts and i like to support laren and it's badass so yeah, that's all I've got. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye.